Neil Hodgson, Mackenzie Hodgson Insurance. What's all this about? Where did it all go wrong, eh? How, how come I've ended up selling insurance? It's 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 funny, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I know you've spoken to Neil about it, but uh, it's it, it's funny. We're here, everyone's surprised, everyone's shocked. Well, you know, because we never mentioned anything about it, but we've been working on it for two years behind the scenes. So it's been a really, really interesting journey, even to get here. We've been live. Our website's been live for for just two days. And I feel like a veteran in, in uh, motorcycle insurance. Like I say, it's been an interesting journey. I've learned a lot, and I know I've got. We've got a lot more to learn, but we've already got a really exciting product that's already, like I say, on day two, competitive with the rest, rest of the market out there, and it's and it's only going to get better. I mean, we are in a really unique position where me and Neil, our life is bikes. Our life is dealing with bikers. It will be track days when I'm at race meetings, commentating, bike shows, whatever it is. And we hear the stories day in, day out. We hear the complaints, we hear the positives, we hear the negatives. And uh, we've tried to take a bit of all those, obviously, improve the negatives, um, go in the direction of the positives and, and uh, produce a product that's competitive. Uh, it, and uh, it is, like I say, on day two, we're already right there. So it's exciting. On your racing career, what were the highlights of it? The British Superbike Championship, obviously, but the domination in 2003. But what else was there in your in your highlight in your career? Um, in my career, highlights would be um, so many, really, because from right at the beginning, when you're not very good, to you know, winning my first one two five, you know, obviously not three, but one two five race, my first British Championship race in my third season of racing was amazing, and then you. You've ticked that box, and then you know winning your first British Superbike, winning your first World Superbike, uh, going from the back of the grid at Alton Park to the front, uh, winning my first AMA, you know, uh, national. It just some really exciting, you know, pivotal moments in your career. Where you look back at the time, you don't really appreciate it that much, but when you're old like me now, uh, you look back and you just think that was pretty special. I was, you know, really, really fortunate. In 2000, you won in front of what was reported a 90,000 crowd, 90,000 people crowd at Donington Park. How did that feel like as a wild card as well? Yeah, as a wild card, that was the number one for the. Uh, I've, I've talked about this before, but as far as endorphin release, adrenaline really, whatever, whatever it is, whatever the drug is that uh, that that uh, motivates Valentino Rossi to keep racing, he he talks about it, doesn't he? That the release of uh, what, how you feel for 12 hours after. That as a wild card to turn up at Donington Park, having been a World Superbike rider before, but not really been good enough, and been kicked out of the paddock and been slagged off by the press and all the all the standard things that go on. It's come back my first time riding against all the best riders in the world on a year old bike and beat everybody it was a very very special moment in my career, and it really that sort of. Uh, that was the foundations of where my career then went because that gave me a level of confidence and self-belief that I held on to for the next five or six years. What was the hardest point to your career? 2004, Dancing Ducati, got on me. Uh, it wasn't actually, it was no. a hot part. It, uh, you know, the, the, my move to MotoGP was a disaster uh, for lots of reasons. That weren't the, it weren't the hardest part. I'd say the hardest point was 1998, I rode for Kawasaki and had two not bad years on, on a factory Ducati. Not stunning. Um, but not disastrous. Not disastrous. Uh, been on the podium, loads of fourths, had loads of fifths, I was like the fifth place king, but it weren't quite good enough, I understand that. Moved to Kawasaki, had a disastrous year, and, and it was three, let's say, average years on the bounds, and, and I was only 24, and I hated racing, I hated the sport, and I nearly retired, and I'm so glad I didn't, because I just had enough, you know, I, I moved back to, to England, to race in England, and I was, I, I believe in luck, you know, people say, ah, oh, you make your own luck, yeah, you do. But you also need a lucky break, and I got a lucky break by signing for the right team, and there was a lot of luck involved in that, and getting involved with uh, Daryl Healy, the GSE racing, Colin Wright, the team manager, and they really helped me become a, a much better rider. Done the highs and lows, what's the scariest point in your career? Was it when Aaron Slight came up to you in Sugo, 98? Oh, well, there's been loads of scary moments, yeah. Yeah, yeah Aaron Slight kicked me on the slowdown lap, which was well out of order, and uh, I understand why he kicked me. He was taking his frustration out, on me because he'd lost yet another world championship. I, mean, I, I know what was going on, but uh, yeah, that was a bit out of order. There's, 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 there's been so many scary moments that happen that I can't really think of one that was like, that was the scariest, but there's times in races where someone's leaning on you and you, your front wheel is touching their back wheel. Loads of stuff that happened that aren't on camera. Every race has got these stories, but there's so many things where you're like, oh my God, 
if you know if this picks me up now I'm going to hospital and, and it's the ones you get away the more get away with are the most scary because usually when you crash it just happens but it's the ones when you've got time to think about it going oh no not here not here so uh, yeah plenty of them how do you what's your judgment of the current MotoGP field it is probably the strongest it's ever been across all three classes can it get stronger still uh, it's hard to imagine it getting stronger because it's that good now. It's best I've ever known it all through my lifetime. They talk about the, you know, the golden era of, of motorcycle racing, which is, you know, the 70s or, uh, you know, the Schwantz rainy years or whatever. This is the golden era of my lifetime. Now I didn't watch Mike Aylwood. Everybody said he was amazing. I've seen what he's achieved. He was obviously amazing. Uh, Jeff Duke, all the, you know, all the great, uh, you know, uh, champions over the years. I can only comment on what I've experienced, and this is the golden era. I'd love it to get better. I don't know if it can. Dorna played a massive part in it, as you know, Kiko, with the way they've done what they've done with the rules. So, so we'll uh, we'll see. Golden era of MotoGP is now. The golden era of World Superbikes was in the late '90s. Can World Superbikes return to that? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, you know, if you draw if you draw a graph, there's been ups and downs. It was it wasn't very strong in 2003 when I was racing. Some of the manufacturers had pulled out. It was a uh, not a great period for world superbikes but um they'll get it back they've made some a decent step with the rule changes for next year i feel sorry for johnny ray who gets criticized for keep on winning <laughs> he's the best rider he yeah. does an incredible job and he's on a really strong team that have worked hard so they deserve to win so you know have they made world superbike boring yes but it's not their fault <laughs> so but they are going to be penalized for it aren't they yeah. so the rule changes look exciting look interesting for me as a punter obviously i manage alex low so i've got a vested interest in him at yamaha who's he had a very strong year last year, finishing, finishing fifth in the world, quite a few podiums and a, a step forward. So we're hoping the rules work in Yamaha's favour. Yamaha are doing a good job anyway. They're, they're improving their you know, products yeah, year, year out. They were getting there. And do you think the Yamaha could be a proper contender next season? With the regulations, have kind of squeezed everything a little bit more together, but they're not, they're not definitive in like MotoGP, you are CRT or Open yeah. or you are full factory. Yeah, I think Yamaha need one more step. You know, I'm not going to stand here now. Alex had a great last, you know, great weekend in the last race in Qatar. Pretty much top three in every session and had a third in a crash. But they need one more set. If they could find, I reckon it's 0 0.2, 0 0.3, which sounds nothing. If they could find that, they'll battle for podiums week in, week out. And if you battle for podiums week in, week out, you have a chance of winning a world title. You know, you need to be at that consistent pace where this year they've, there's, been, they've been, there's been some real bogey tracks for Yamaha but uh, the, the team works so hard with Paul Denning who's great works so hard but he, you've never seen anyone more motivated than Paul so uh, he'll, make it, he'll make it happen he's had some tough times and they deserve a better look I think some people say British Superbikes is as strong as it's ever been now but when you was racing it was pretty healthy competition too would you agree with it that it is as strong as it has ever been oh it's as strong as it's ever been it's stronger than when we did it where the difference is when I did it there was I'd say six very very fast riders and we, luckily we all battled and we, there were some there were some great races now there's I don't know what's that number 17 I don't know there's a ridiculous amount of what I call very very fast riders so you know it, 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 it's it's my favorite championship to watch obviously I work in MotoGP and that's my job and I, obviously I love that but um, I, I love it when there's not a clash when I've got a weekend off and I can sit on my bed and uh, not have to work and I, but I, what I like about BSB is all the classes you know I love that a race finishes Matt Roberts does a quick interview and hey up second race the next race is starting you know it's brilliant isn't it right, I've got a question from Michael Howarth here he says Neil do you regret being born in Burnley instead of Todd Morden? <laughs> Michael Howarth. I've heard the name. Did he race one time? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Neil Hodgson saying that. <laughs> I remember um, Michael Howarth. Now, he had some really big crashes. Now, what I can't understand with Michael is, when you go that slow, how you can crash a motorcycle. I understand when you're on the... Yeah, we talk about the limit and going fast, but <laughs> to have those spectacular crashes at such a slow speed, um, it, that takes talent in itself. And, as far as I'm very proud of uh, being born in Burnley, the thought of being born in Tomerden, which is, well, it's in the shade. He'll it, know what that means. I'll leave it there for that question. La final question. Have you and Neil McKenzie forgiven each other after Cadwell Park 2000? Yeah, that's uh, funny. Funny. I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> so, uh, do you know what? There were no argument or anything, even when it happened at the time, because the mistake was mine. The mistake was I hesitated. But... 
I've played that race back in my head so many times. It was just one of those two corners to go. There's a dry line, a thin one. Yeah, Neil was on it. I caught him fast. I hesitated instead of just diving up the inside because it was my teammate. I didn't want to take him out as well. And Chris saw my hesitation. And Chris, there's one thing Chris Walker never did was hesitate. And he went across the way. Chris should have crashed, but it was one of those genius moments that Chris did, had a lot in his career. In those tricky conditions, there was no one better. So yeah, I've forgiven him. And luckily, you won the championship anyway. Well, luckily, <laughs> luckily, I won the championship anyway. That was a year we both should have won the championship. I know that sounds cheesy, yeah. but uh, luckily, me and Chris are good mates now, and uh, he's obviously doing really well with his dealership, and uh, he's a grafter, isn't he? He is. Yeah, Arjun, thanks for joining us. My pleasure.